Hello, my name is Matthew Dimmock. I'm a lecturer at Monash University and today I want to talk to you about medical imaging and why it's such an interesting and fascinating topic. Now, many of you will know that there are several different techniques that are encompassed under the banner of medical imaging. These include things like PET, SPECT, MRI, ultrasound and CT. It costs a great deal of money to develop new and novel medical imaging techniques, so often when we have a, a bright idea, we will scale down the technology so that it can be tested with animals to start with. And here you can see at the bottom of the slide uh, a device called the Rat Cap that was developed by Brookhaven National Laboratory, and it's essentially a fancy new pet system scaled down to mice and rodents. So before I discuss with you the ideas behind SPECT, which is the technique I've chosen out of several techniques that we could have discussed. Uh, I first want to discuss simple pinhole imaging. So many of you may have used a pinhole camera in the past to observe things such as the lunar eclipse. You would do this by pricking a small pinhole in a piece of card, placing a piece of paper behind the piece of card, and then the light that is reflected from the moon's surface is then directed through the pinhole and effectively you end up with an image that is uh, upside down and back to front of the moon. Now in this image I haven't used uh, a picture of the moon, I've used a representation or a phantom as we call it in the industry which uh, is the red object above the pinhole and we can see the projection image of that on the piece of paper. In medical imaging, we can't use visible light to penetrate into or out of the human body, so we have to be more clever. We shift up or down the spectrum de depending on whether you're talking about the frequency or the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation, and so we move into the, the regime of X-rays and gamma rays, as you can see from this figure. So here we see a simple diagram of a SPECT setup. A radio tracer is injected into the patient. The radio tracer has some chemical composition and attached to that is a, a, a radioactive nuclei that will then decay and emit gamma rays. The radio tracer will be, or well, the chemistry of the radio tracer will be targeted so that it's prefer preferentially absorbed by, say, a tumour. Because that tumour holds most of the radio tracer, when the radioactive element decays, uh, it will emit gamma rays. The gamma rays will then go from the site of the tumour, pass through a pinhole and onto a detector. So you can see that we've modified our setup so that instead of a piece of card, we now have a piece of lead with a hole in it. And that's to, uh, because uh, X-rays and gamma rays are, are of high enough energy that they can pass out of the patient. Uh, they could also obviously pass through a piece of cardboard. So we need to have lead there, a much thicker and more dense material and we, it's no good having a piece of paper behind the pinhole. We actually want to record and digitize these signals. So we use a pixelated detector. And you can see, again, we have an upside down back to front projection image of the radio tracer distribution or the tumor inside the patient on the detector. Now, the tumor is a three dimensional beast. So clearly we, it's no good just taking one two dimensional projection image. We actually have to rotate around the patient. Now we could obtain the same result by rotating the patient, but patients don't generally like being spun around. So we choose to rotate the pinhole and the detector around the patient and collect multiple projection views. We can also be more clever with the pinhole geometry and uh, we can make the detector system more efficient by punching more pinholes in the, the pinhole collimator. And here we can see that we have three views of the same object through the three different pinholes. So we're maximizing our sensitivity. Now, we, we actually need to reconstruct a, an image of the radiation that we've collected on the detector. So it's, it's no good just adding together the projection data because you can see from the, the detector data in, this, in the dashed circles on this slide, that if we simply added that data together, that would not give us a three-dimensional volumetric image. So what we have to do is is once the patient has got up and gone away, we then map where our detectors were in a computer, in a piece of computer software. And we also specify what's called an imaging volume, which you can think of as being like a Rubik's cube of lots of small voxels. 
so effectively a large array of computer memory. And we then traced the lines that were representative of the routes that the gamma rays took from the patient through the pinhole into the detector. And we invert that process. So we now project or back project from the detector pixel, which detected the radiation through the pinhole into the imaging volume. And all of the imaging voxels that um, the radiation may have come from are assigned some intensity. Now we can do that for lots of uh, or for all of the detector data at all of the angles so in this image I've simply shown the same detector or one the first detector pixel uh, for each of the two projections now in reality we would have to back project the data from all of the detector pixels that are highlighted in red through the pinholes at each projection angle so we would end up with many many thousands of lines of data being pushed back into the imaging volume and we build up the intensity of the image which will then give us a three-dimensional representation of what we think the tumor looked like inside the patient. So that was just a very small introduction to medical imaging and SPECT more particularly that in medical imaging. If you would like to find out more please visit the conversation website and the URLs that are listed on this slide or contact me directly. Thank you very much.